the opportunity to be able to um, get across these incredible stories of these wonderful heroes that, I don't know, I'm amazed every single day. I'm sure that my team feels the same way. We feel so blessed to be part of their lives and we're really forever changed by their courage and strength. So we're going to go through a little bit, just a little bit, to get you an idea of what OFR does. Um, Operation First Defense, we're also known as OFR. Um, we support our nation's wounded heroes and their families, and their families, well, probably one of the most important words <laughs> to that, is the families are the unsung heroes to all of this. People don't realize that um, their burdens are heavy. And without women like Krista, um, spouses, parents uh, that are there supporting these young heroes, uh, I think they would have a difficult time, first of all, even doing their jobs, much less once injury occurs. Uh, I think that as a mother of a soldier, I can say um, from experience that once that uniform goes on, the sacrifices truly begin, and the entire family serves. So um, we happen to think that you can accomplish great things when you don't care who gets the credit. We don't care who gets the credit. We just want our, our veterans to be taken care of in the fashion that they deserve because we could not live in the country that we live in. And I'm sorry, I feel emotional. Um, without them, and uh, these sacrifices can, cannot go unnoticed. So, by teaming together with other organizations, we are constantly out there searching for people that can help us. Um, and, you know, first question I ask a soldier when he comes into our, our, or he or she comes into our program is, Where are you from? And we try to keep a running tally of um, different people in different states. Uh, because American soldier, our soldiers come from all across the nation. So to only help a certain state's um, military just wouldn't seem right, I guess. So, um, this picture here, uh, this is a uh, young man, Ronnie Porta, who is very, very dear to my heart. And I talk to Ronnie at least once a week. Ronnie's gone through like 70 surgeries. He's only really just begun. It, it's going to be a long, long journey for him. But I'll tell you, he is amazing. And um, he gives you a whole new perspective on a bad day because he gets through every day with they make amazing courage, strength, the best attitude I have ever encountered. He's just an incredibly young man. So uh, when our wounded and their families say to us, what will I do now? Uh, please join us, everyone, in saying that take my hand and we will get through this together and give hope to all that need it. They really need uh, our um, support. And a lot of times it's emotional support that they need the most. Our financial aid is... Um, Every case is different, so we really don't have certain guidelines. We help with rent, mortgage, um, overdue utilities, vehicle payments and repairs, groceries, clothing. Many of our heroes don't even have the money to be able to get school clothes for their kids right now. Um, we have a uh, air transportation where we help um, while they're in the recovery stage at one of the major medical facilities. We help with air transportation for the service member as well as family members. Many times it's not unusual for a family to be at Walter Reed two to three years, seriously. And um, so sometimes bringing in a cousin, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a brother, a sister, whatever, is really uplifting to them. So we find whatever's uplifting to them is part of our mission. Um, we, have, we have the personal requested items that, that come to us. Um, and range from a laptop or an iPod or, you know, in, 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 sometimes it's those kind of items, sometimes um, it, it's, it's necessity items. But really, we try to help with whatever is brought to us. Um, so how are our families affected? Most cases, uh, most families in the United States, two income families. So when the, when the service member is injured uh, and a spouse or a parent, a loved one is going to go and be at their side at one of the major medical facilities, immediately there's a loss of income. So, and as well, when, when the service member is injured, his, his or her income will change because they're no longer receiving hazard pay or combat pay. So there's also uh, a loss of income. So, and, you know, I think if anybody's military, they'll know that, you know, them getting paid a lot of money isn't really part of the deal. 
Um, so it doesn't take long for the trickle down to become a disaster. So um, usually when our, our military is sent to one of the major medical facilities, it's not, it's most often not anywhere near home. So, um, so they're usually in Walter Reed, uh, which is in Washington, D.C., or Bethesda, uh, Minneapolis, uh, Texas, and Florida are, are the four main areas that, that our military go to for their re recovery. So for most cases, most families, they're far from home. So um, injuries occurring from the global war on terror, terror are so severe in many cases that the recovery time will be a long term. And for some, like Ronnie, um, it may be for the rest of his life that his family is going to need some kind of um, support and, uh, and help from different organizations. So understandably, once that the family um, is, loses their job, then it, it just becomes a trickle down. It's, it's just a terrible disaster for their finances. And so household income goes down and expenses go up, and consequently a good number of them are losing their homes, they're having their utilities cut off, and they just can't keep up. And I have personally um, been with families that as they were leaving to go out of the gates of Walter Reed, have been stopped by vehicle repos. And I've listened to those calls, I've taken those calls, I've battled those calls. Um, it's pretty amazing what um, some people, they just don't care. I know, they just don't seem to care at all. Circumstances don't matter. So, we personally believe that uh, our government is trying very hard, um, and in a lot of cases doing you know, extremely well by, uh, by the families. But it's a huge job, and, um, and I think that we, as American citizens, who benefit from the services that are provided to us um, by our military, we have a responsibility to take care of, uh, of these families as they come back. So we don't really have a problem with the government, we just think that we have, uh, we have responsibility. Because of the advances in, in the body armor and the medical treatment, casualties who would have died in previous conflicts are living. So the quality of life has got to come into factor here. If we're going to save these young men and women, then we have to make sure that they're taken care of. There are 33,000, probably many more since uh, I put together this, wounded heroes from Iraq and Afghanistan. That's a huge number coming into our, our veteran our VA systems. So the OFR, we provide financial aid to wounded, injured, and critically ill service members. We have a lot of service members that are coming back with fourth stage cancer from the theater, so, um, and we also have uh, service members over there that are getting injured severely, but not actually in combat. We're one of the few organizations that takes care of that. Most organizations expect that um, the injured has to, has to be a combat-related issue. We don't feel that way. Again, uh, we feel as if uh, once that uniform goes on, sacrifices begin, and we're going to help in whatever situations we can, as long as there's a medical issue that's our only scope. Uh, we, pro we provide aid uh, from the, the beginning of injury, and as we've been going along this journey with them, we tend to stay with the families, and like Krista said, we don't let them go. Our Christmas list just keeps growing. <laughs> so, um, but we stay with them, and so we've been able to travel this journey and see the different things that come up as, as the road goes on. And granted, there is a major need for us at the beginning of, in of injury, but we're finding that as they progress through their journey and get into the VA system, that's where it really becomes a problem for the families. There's, sometimes there is months uh, after they go into the VA system before, months, six months, a year, before their actual benefits begin. And during that time, there's no income. There's still a spouse that's taking care of her injured soldier um, or a parent, and, um, and there's no income. And so there's no way for these families to survive. When we have become a bridge to make sure that they don't lose everything because they fought for our freedom. So we follow them all the way into civilian life and probably even you know, life. So anyway, um, we also have a travel program. And, so, and I'm sure that was the financial program. The, our travel program um, is, like I said a few minutes ago, we help with um, getting family members, oh, and sometimes a service member 